Okay, today we're going to be talking about kinetic energy, uh, Kelvin temperature, we'll talk a little bit about Celsius temperature as well. Um, but we're going to talk about some physics concepts and how they apply to chemistry. So um, let's jump right into this. We have kinetic energy. This is a definition that we'll need to know. And kinetic energy, as we saw before, is going to be the energy molecules have to motion or do to motion. So any object, whether it be a large object like a train or a small object like an, an atom of helium, will have kinetic energy and um, just because they're moving. And that's what kinetic energy is. So um, the more motion we have, the greater our kinetic energy is. And we're going to use Ke to represent kinetic energy. So the faster something is going, the more kinetic energy has. The slower something's going, the, the, the smaller the kinetic energy. And how does this relate to chemistry? Well, it relates to chemistry through the idea of temperature. And we did talk about the difference between temperature and heat before. But the, temp, the measure or temperature is going to be the measure, which we use a thermometer, the measure of the average kinetic energy of molecules. So in average, how fast are the molecules moving? We, we do say that it is an average because not all molecules are moving at the same rate of speed. Some are moving fast, some are moving slow, some are right in the middle. So we sort of average all of them, and that's what um, temperature is. It's just an average. And like I said, we're going to use a thermometer. Thermometer to measure the average kinetic energy of molecules, whether it be a thermometer with um, uh, old manual thermometer with um, spirit alcohol, alcohol in it or uh, an electronic thermometer. They're still going to measure the average kinetic energy of molecules. Um, and most of the time in chemistry class, we're going to use this, measure this temperature in degrees Celsius. And remember that boiling water um, will boil at 100 degrees Celsius, and it'll freeze at 0 degrees Celsius the unit that we use in chemistry. Although soon we'll find out that there's another unit that we use as well. Now, what does temperature mean? If we have a high temperature, high temperature is going to tell us that we have more molecules with a greater average kinetic energy. So lots and lots of molecules moving really fast means we have a higher temperature. And a lower temperature is going to be the opposite. We have more molecules with a um, lesser average kinetic energy. Okay, So it just tells us the difference between something that's hot and something that's cold or something with a high temperature or low temperature is that um, high temperatures have more molecules moving faster. Now, there is an idea, and theoretical idea, that um, we can get to what's called absolute zero. And absolute zero is going to be the temperature when the motion of these molecules stops. You see, um, solids, the molecules in a solid at room temperature, let's say we have a block of aluminum. There's our aluminum. And let's say we're at room temperature, which is about 25 degrees Celsius. The molecules that make up, or the atoms that make up aluminum, all those aluminum atoms, are moving. They're vibrating, just vibrating back and forth um, at 25 degrees Celsius. But if we cool this block of aluminum down cold enough, and the temperature measurement is negative 273 degrees Celsius, or we say that zero Kelvin, which is a new temperature that we're going to talk about, or, or scale that we talked about, the motion of these molecules that are vibrating will actually stop. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is temperature conversions and how do we take the temperature in Celsius and convert it to this new scale called Kelvin. Um, and Kelvin is, is represented by a capital K. And it's, it's a relatively simple formula that's given to you on the back of your periodic table. And it's degrees Celsius. All we have to do is add 273 and that gives us Kelvin temperature. So we add 273 degrees Celsius. So here's an example problem. Um, convert 25 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. OK, so this is a pretty easy problem. What we're going to do is we're going to use the formula degrees Celsius plus 273 equals Kelvin. And I'm just going to take the value for 25 degrees Celsius, and I'm just going to plug it in right there. So I'm going to get 25 plus 273, and it's going to give me 298K. 
Kelvin as an answer. Sorry about that, that was the bell. We'll do one more problem here real quickly. So we're going to convert 303 Kelvin to degrees Celsius. So again, we're going to use the formula, degrees Celsius plus 273 equals Kelvin. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug the value of 303 Kelvin in right there. So let's do that. So degrees Celsius plus 273 equals 303 Kelvin. And so what we're going to do is to solve it, to solve it for degrees Celsius, because we're adding here, is we're going to subtract 273 from both sides. And what we're going to get there is we're going to get an answer of 30 degrees Celsius, and that's our answer. Okay? And that's the end of our talk on kinetic energy and Kelvin temperature.